Hello everyone, this is going to be a Black Mage Complete Guide. This is N Walker series. Uh, this is going to be a similar section to what I did on the Monk Complete Guide. You don't have to watch the entire thing. I recommend not watching the entire thing because it will be very lengthy. Uh, very minimal editing on my part. Uh, there's going to be timestamps down in the bottom section of the video. There's going to be timestamps in the video's description as well. Uh, if I miss anything, just let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm going to go through the majority of the abilities and spells, etc. from levels 1 through 50. I'll take it slow. I'll try to go through like the, the core of Black Mage. Once I hit 50, uh, I'm going to start going through the, uh, the fancy rotations, the raid rotations. Uh, and then I'll just go through uh, the phases, Heaven's Word... Stormblood, I'll go through every 10 levels to kind of speed up the video so it doesn't take, two, you know, three, four hours for me to go through this stuff. I try to keep it around an hour. And as always, don't watch the entire video. Watch what you want or what you're interested in watching in a timestamps. Otherwise, you're, you're going to be here for a while. But if you are interested in watching my stuff, then thank you for watching the entire video. Uh, I have a segment up here in which I will be putting buttons. The Typically the top is going to be single targets and the bottom will be AoE. Uh, later on, once we hit level 50, etc., I may need to use both of them for a single uh, rotation and for AoE as they get a little convoluted uh, as we move on through the motions of things. Let's get this started. At level 1, we get the Blizzard 1. Just spam the Blizzard 1 till you hit level 2. We find a target here. Go through the motions. Spam the Blizzard 1 till you hit level 2. Once you hit level 2, the rotation shifts to you spamming Fire 1 till you run out of MP. Once you've run out of MP, you're going to spam the blizzard until you have the adequate amount of MP for you to then spam fire again. Now, you have along this a aspect mastery trait. Once the MP value reaches a very small threshold, you're going to need to reapply the blizzard in order to get mana back. It seems a bit complicated at first. Yeah, the player's about to kill that really fast. Uh, but basically, the more fire spells you cast, the more mana cost on your fire spells itself. Now, I'm completely out of mana. I need to cast my Blizzard. Blizzard costs no mana once I'm in the fire form, when I have the little fire sphere around my character. I cast it once to remove it, and I cast it again to gain the opposite, which is the ice. Notice how if I'm in the opposite, now the fire spells are free of cost. Uh, while you're in this form, your mana also regens a steady amount over time. Umbral Ice 1, I believe, recovers 32% of your mana bar. Anyway, that is basically your rotation till you hit level 4. Spam your mana, spam your fire spells. Uh, once you've run out of mana, spam your blizzard spells till you get adequate amount of MP uh, in order for you to continue with your fire spells to take out your target. You don't need to fully recover your MP bar. Just make sure you have enough of it so you can cast your fire spells to take out your target. Uh, so for example, all I'll need is maybe 6,000 to kill that guy. You don't need to replenish the entire bar. Now, at level 4, we get the, uh, I believe, the transpose. So the transpose changes the single rotation severely because on the fact is swaps astral fire with a single umbral ice or umbral ice with a single astral fire. What this means is now your rotation is going to shift into a more delicate position. In other words, you cast your blizzard. You cast Transpose, and then you cast Fire Spells till you run out of MP. By doing this way, you skip the first Fire Spell, costing the initial 800, and then you gain the Astral Fire to increase the mana cost to 1600, and also increasing the damage. Uh, you skip that phase. You just 
cast your blizzard spell, you're trying to expose directly into the damage. Let's hit a normal target. So this transpose. I'm already in the astral fire. We've already upgraded damage. Now let's just cast our normal fire spells. Once you've run out of mana, transpose again and cast your blizzard spell. While you're doing this, your mana recovers. Once your mana has recovered completely, transpose again and cast your fire spells. This is basically what you'll be doing at level four. So as an overhead rotation, it's still six fire spells and then you transpose into the ice. So this is basically what you do. Now, just like I mentioned to you guys before, prior to this, don't spam your blizzard spell once you've transposed. You just need enough mana to kill your target. Now finally, level six, uh, we have the thunder. So let's go ahead and sink down the thunder basically changes this simple rotation into something that looks more like a, an actual rotation. So we're going to place the thunder there and we're going to move everything to the right because now we actually have a decent rotation segment and there goes the thunder. Now the thunder is pretty much used on anything that has a significant health bar. If the target is dying too fast, like these regular enemies out in the field, you just ignore the thunder and just do the previous rotation that you've been doing up until now. But if you're fighting a boss, this is basically your rotation instead. The, if the enemy still has plenty of health after you transpose, just go ahead and do the thunder. You're going to be transposing around here right after the thunder, unless you still need a hefty amount of MP, in which case you can cast another blizzard after this one here. So it'll look something like after the... the the thunder you're going to cast another blizzard so blizzard thunder blizzard your mana should have been you know in a in a, in a hefty amount of uh, of mana by now so then you transpose and then you spam your fire once again this is only if you're up against a boss enemy something with definitely a chunky amount of health otherwise this is basically your rotation things are just going to die too fast for me to really do much of anything but I guess you can just swap targets with it. So that's under Thunder. It's going to die to the damage over time. While I'm basically pelting this guy with fire spells. Notice how he's taking damage. Now I'm going to transpose. Cast a blizzard. No, let me get out of telegraph. Seems he ran out of uh, the thunder, so we're going to just take him out. And that's basically your rotation up to level 6. Okay, let's say you are level 12 now. You should have the Blizzard 2 unlocked. This is your first, basically your first taste at the AoE rotation. Uh, Blizzard 2, just like the Blizzard 1, you're going to be spamming this for AoE. It does 100 potency, um, significantly higher potency than Blizzard 1. So you're basically, if, you hit, you're, if you're hitting two targets, you're going to be using Blizzard 2 instead of Blizzard 1. Now, the idea is to use Blizzard 2 on as many targets as possible. But uh, sadly, this is an outer field. I probably won't get too many targets. But uh, let's just imagine that there's four or five targets here and you're in a dungeon. So level 15, Sastasha, I believe, is at level 15. Uh, you just jumped into a dungeon and uh, the, the tank has pulled many targets. Just spam Blizzard 2, honestly. Uh, spam Blizzard 2 as many times as possible. Uh, you're going to be up against multiple targets. And most of the time, if you use a single target rotation or a single target fire one, you're not going to be doing as much potency as you literally just spamming Blizzard 2. Now, if you're down to, you know, two or three targets and they're still beefy, this changes slightly where the fact is if they're still slightly beefy, uh, if, there's, if they're going to die fast and you can alternate into a fire one, now make sure you transpose before you throw the fire uh, from the umbral ice. Or if there is another enemy coming in, then you can transpose into, uh, you can thunder into a transpose and then start chucking 
fire spells so these are options for now it really doesn't matter too much the aoe is kind of finicky it's kind of there for you to uh, mess around with let's move on now that i'm here i may as well talk to you guys about the level 15 scathe uh scathe is bad uh deals magic damage with a potency of 100 additional effect 20 percent chance of potency will double uh it is in your first it's basically your first instant spell which casts instantly and you need to wait the full recast timer i don't have it on my heart bar meaning i don't use this and i don't you know i don't recommend anyone using this or getting used to using this uh, so this is basically it that dial is basically your global cooldown you need to wait for that to completely come back so you can use a spell yeah the best way to use scathe in this game is to remove it from your hud trust me on this you do not want to get used to using scathe ever now at level 18 we get a resemblance of a proper aoe rotation uh, similar to level 4 us using the fire into transpose into blizzard and then back to transpose into fire we're going to do that similar thing but with aoe now we're going to do blizzard 2 transpose into fire 2. the idea is you need 9000 mp in order to cast three of these back to back remember the fire spells will double in mana cost and also in potency a uh, slight increase uh, going from 1500 to 3000 so you'll need uh, 9000 mp to cast three of these back to back and then we transpose again once we run out of men, uh, MP we transpose and then we cast enough blizzards uh, blizzard 2 in order to for us to get enough MP to kill our targets it, typically you'll be doing this in dungeons so three is pretty safe ignore your thunder spell that's typically just used up against one or two targets the potency is too low when you have you know four five six targets at once uh, due to the tank pulls uh, so the I, once this goes through, uh, you're going to basically transpose back again. Again, this is basically you wanting a full mana bar. So casting three of them back to back gives your uh, Umbro Ice enough time to recharge the 9000 MP. Sometimes it might be too low, so you may just stand there for about half a second. But just make sure you need the full 9,000. 3,000 for one, 6,000 for two, 9,000 for three. Transpose, and then you're going to basically span the fire once more. So that's basically the rotation. Let me go ahead and give you kind of an idea of what this looks like. So this is two, transpose, and then we're going to spam fire two. One, yep, that guy died fast. Watch my mana bar down here. Two and three. We're going to transpose again. Notice how my mana was not even existent for me to even cast the blizzard. So one, two, and three. My mana is just fast enough now. So we're going to transpose again. It's similar to the level four version. We're just doing AoE damage this time. Two and three and transpose back again to Blizzard. Get out of the telegraph. My MP is back up again after just two of them, so we're gonna transpose due to having to remove ourselves from the telegraph. Here I am just shy of 9,000, so I'm unable to cast more than just the two, so we'll have to prematurely go back and transpose. And that's basically what you'll be doing for the most part. Again, this is basically during dungeon encounters. Uh, you most likely won't be doing this stuff out in the field during fates. And if you are, consider using a chocobo so you don't die to too many enemies at once. Before we jump to the next spell, we have a trait at level 20. It's semi-important. Allows the stacking of a second astral fire and umbral ice. But this really only pertains in importance to the astral fire itself. The Umbro Ice 2 is pretty much non-existent. You don't really have to worry too much about the mana region. I think it's 4700. 
47%, it goes from 32 to 47% of your MP. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about that. But once you go from Astral 1 to Astral 2, Astral 1, you basically get it from the Transpose. Uh, so you go from uh, Blizzard uh, Blizzard 2 uh, straight to Transpose into Astral 1. So once you cast the first Fire 2, you upgrade yourself to Astral Fire 2. And that also upgrades the damage. Uh, the MP value still stays the same. You're going, you're going to still be casting three of these, so the mana cost still doubles, uh, but the damage will go up slightly. So the mana cost is still staying at 3,000, so you don't have to worry about that stuff uh, once it goes to Astral Fire 2. But with that, let's go ahead and jump into an actual rotation here. At level 26, we get Thunder 2. This is going to change our AoE to similar to the level 6 Thunder, uh, Thunder 1. We actually have a AoE rotation now. Um, now, if enemies are dying too fast, then just go ahead and continue with this rotation that you've seen up until now. Uh, but if you have slightly beefy targets then this is what you'll be using instead and let's go ahead and throw that there so this is going to be your rotation instead i have a beefy target ahead of me and i should have done this for the single target but i may as well do this now let's go ahead and do the blizzard thunder 2 transpose and now we're going to do three Fire twos, two and three, transpose blizzard two, thunder two, blizzard two again, and transpose. Let's go ahead and do three fire twos again. One, two, and three, transpose blizzard two. Thunder 3, Blizzard 2 again, Transpose, Fire 2, Fire 2, Fire 2, Transpose. So this is the Umbro Ice, Thunder 2, Umbro Ice again, Transpose. So now we're in Astral Fire 1, cast the first Fire 2. Now we're in Astral Fire 2, we have extra damage, cast two more Fire 2s with the extra damage, and then we transpose back to Blizzard 2, Thunder 2 to renew the damage over time, Blizzard 2 again to maximize MP, transpose again to the first Fire 2, Astral Fire 1, the, the second Fire 2, Astral Fire 2, and the third Astral Fire 2, transpose. Blizzard 2 again. Target's dying, so skip the thunder. And there you go. Okay, uh, level 28, we get our Thundercloud. Uh, grants a 10% chance that after each damage over time tick inflicted by Thunder 1 or Thunder 2, uh, there's a small chance of the Thunder 1 or Thunder 2 actually lighting up. Uh, when they do light up, it's going to be similar to Scathe. They're going to be instant cast. Uh, just make sure that if you're up against a single target, you throw your Thunder 1. And if you're up against AoE uh, in a dungeon, up against multiple targets, you throw your Thunder 2. It'll be instant. The, the spell will actually do its full damage over time initially. And then it'll reset the actual damage counter. So let's get in into kind of a rotation here. So I'm gonna throw Thunder 1 on both of these guys, if I can, uh, without the stun getting me good. Come on, Mr. Stun. No? Okay, stun's getting me good here. So Thunder that guy, and then Thunder this guy. Now we're waiting for the procs. If I can just get a good proc here, Mr. Thunder. They throw it on that guy too. And now we got a proc. Since we're in single target, we're going to throw our instant thunder that did the full damage to that guy. And it reset his timer. Wow, these guys love 
So that's and that's the AOE. So uh, typically AOE is three targets, uh, but I showed it there just to kind of give you guys an example. Uh, and again, it proct again. If it's AOE, each individual target has a three percent chance of proccing the thunder cloud. If it's a single target of you using the thunder one on them, uh, individual targets have a 10% chance of proccing the thunder cloud. So single target thunder one has a 10% chance of proccing the, the thunder cloud, by which case you can throw either or. So as soon as you proc the thunder cloud, you can swap to AOE or you can swap from AOE to single target. Yes, anytime you're in a rotation up against a single target, as soon as the thunder cloud procs and you see the actual uh, thunder light up, you need to pause your rotation and throw the thunder spell. Just throw it. If if there's enemies coming at you and you notice that it's about to become an AOE situation, then go ahead and consider throwing the AOE uh, during the single target. Uh, and then vice versa, of course. Let's move on. Plenty of targets on this one. Oh, tank died. Okay. Man award. Sleep, save me, save me, sleep. Don't hit him. Don't don't hit him. Don't don't touch him. Don't touch him. Okay. Okay, tank is back. We're saved. <laughs> Woo! Okay, that was close. That was really close. Okay. So at level 35, we get a couple things. The first thing we get is the Aspect Mastery 3. Allows the stacking of a third Astro Fire and Umbro Ice. Cast a Fire 2 or a Blizzard 2. Grants the maximum stacks of Astro Fire or Umbro Ice, respectively. When maintaining three stacks of Astro Fire or Umbro Ice, the cast time of spells of the opposite element is also halved. What that means is, uh, along with the the two new abilities or two new spells that you get the blizzard 3 which is under a unlock quest that you need to do and of course the fire 3 that you should get immediately the single and the aoe change drastically um, well the single rotation is it goes as follows basically you you cast a blizzard 3 you're going to remove your your blizzard 1 completely because the blizzard 3 does not take over for blizzard 1 it's a completely separate spell uh, you can keep it you can keep your blizzard one on your hotbar just in case you do lower level content after the blizzard three goes off you get the full umbral ice three uh, so your mana uh, recovery is i believe it's 6400 mp or 64 percent 62 percent somewhere around there uh, so it's it's very fast now after that since this is single target we do a thunder one thunder one Oh. And after that we just do Fire 3, getting ourselves into the Umbro Fire 3 completely, and then we just spam Fire Spells. After the second Fire Spell we throw our Mana Font, and then we continue to spam Fire Spells until the complete reset, which is your Blizzard 3, Thunder 1, and then Fire 3 into more Fire. Blizzard 3, Thunder, Fire 3, we're going to cast our first Fire 1, and then our second Fire 1, Mana Font, our third Fire 1, just keep casting, keep casting Fire 1 until you run out of MP. Five and six. Now we cast a Blizzard three, Thunder one, Fire three, and a Thunder proc. Get out of that. Or Fire one spams. Another Thunder 1, Thunder Proc. You kind of get the idea. 
Alright, let's continue this with the AoE now. So similarly to the single target, the AoE is basically shortened even further. Uh, we're going to start off with the Blizzard 2 and then we'll do the Thunder 2. Immediate Fire 2. This is going to be a free Fire 2. Uh, mind you that and after that we're going to do a actual fire 2 that will cost mana so going from uh, blizzard 3 or, or umbro ice 3 to the astral fire 3 uh, it should have no mana cost on the first fire 2 the second fire 2 will have mana cost and we're going to throw the mana font there uh, and after that we're going to chuck two more fire 2s after that, we're just going to renew, rinse, and repeat uh, with a Blizzard 2, a Thunder 2, a Free Fire 2, and then just basically burn our MP, rinse and, re uh, rinse and renew, basically. The, the rotation is pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Uh, this is basically Black Mage AoE. Go ahead and start with that, take that off. Okay, that's one. And that's the free one. Notice my MP didn't go down. Okay, this is not the free one, but this is damage. That was very slow. Notice the cast time on that. This is the third one. And then this is the fourth one. We're going to immediately swap Thunder again. This is our free one. And now we start casting, burning our MP. That's our first, second, and third. Get out of that. Thunder. And then we do our free fire two. And then we do our actual fire two for damage. Long cast means high damage. Second. And third, you get the idea. Okay, at level 40, we get freeze. Now, freeze, sadly, at this level, in general, generally speaking, currently, uh, is pretty much the same as scathe. You don't need to use it in your rotation, it's actually non existent in a proper rotation currently. But I will go through it in detail. Uh, deals ice damage with a potency of 120 to target and all enemies nearby it can only be executed while under the effect of the umbral ice in other words you need to throw your blizzard 2 and then you're able to throw your freeze now the reason why this is pretty much pointless to use currently is because there's really no space for you to, to put it in at level 40 um, we pretty much won't be able to use freeze until much later on so for now you you don't need to even look at this. Now you can do freeze if targets are dying once you've casted your Blizzard 2. Instead of throwing the Thunder 2, you can just simply just freeze. You can simply freeze and then you can just toss your free fire 2 and then everything dies afterwards. Uh, but other than that, this is basically still going to be your rotation at level 40. Okay, I will touch back on, on this stuff once we actually, you know, get to naturally use Freeze, but for now and for a long time, um, just just ignore it. It's, it's going to be faster if you just do this rotation. Again, if things are dying too fast, then you can just swap out the Thunder 2 for the Freeze and continue on with the rotation when things are dying really fast. Okay, so the next step is the Firestarter proc at level 42. Uh, grants a 40% chance that after casting your fire, in other words, fire one, when you're spamming your fire one during rotation, your next fire three will require no MP and have no cast time. In other words, treat it like a like a ranged weapon skill. Uh, you can prop, you can use it immediately, and then you can run around until your GCD comes back up again, your global cooldown. Duration of 30 seconds. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to pop our Fire 3, just imagine we're doing our normal rotation. Uh, during the Fire 3 goes off, now we're going to spam Fire 1 till our MP is empty. While you're doing this, Fire 3 will sometimes proc uh, and treat it as a weapon skill, throw it immediately. Uh, if we get a proc here, 
There it is. There's the proc. So the fire starter goes off. Uh, you have this option to throw it anytime you want. Typically, it's going to be immediately. You can also hold on to it if you need to move out of telegraph. So you can just throw it and then move out of telegraphs. It lets you do a lot of things for now. Just throw it immediately. Later on, it's going to serve a different purpose, a more genuine purpose. At level 45, as you can see here, we get the upgraded version of Thunder 1 to Thunder 3. It's basically higher potency and fancier animation. I don't think I need to go show you guys a rotation. Uh, pretty much the the highlight of this is it just upgrades. You you don't really need to do a whole lot. Just do a, a quest to unlock it, and then boom, Thunder 1 becomes Thunder 3. All right. So at level 50, we get two new abilities, well, spell and a... Uh, ability itself. Ethereum Manipulation lets you basically teleport to your party members. Uh, it has a cooldown of 30, uh, 10 seconds, I should say. Uh, it has quite a reach. I don't want to jump into a dungeon because DPSQ is ridiculous, but you, you basically make sure that you have a party member selected and then you, you click a party member and you click this on them make sure you have this on your hotbar i have it on r it's it's make sure it's somewhere where it's relatively easy for you to access uh and that just basically turns black mage into no running you do not run as black mage level 50. uh instead you press this you might need to you know do some sidestepping but you need to be casting constantly and this definitely reassures that idea and the other spell is going to be flare Deals fire damage to target and all enemies nearby with a potency of 220. This is a flat potency. It's not increased for the first enemy and 40% less for our remaining enemies. Uh, grants your astral fire 3, similar to casting your fire 2. Duration of 15 seconds. It has a long cast bar, so you definitely want to be using your swift cast along with this as often as possible. And it has the MP cost of all of your MP, all remaining MP. The lowest amount of MP you should be able to cast this with is 800. Uh, it's the equivalent of throwing a Mega Aether on your character. Not high quality, just regular Mega Aether. It's the main reason why it's so popular on the market board. Uh, so Flare, how, how, how do you use Flare? This is basically how you use Flare. Uh, you throw it after your... Uh, your your third fire too. It's gonna burn through all of your MP. Uh, if you have the full mana bar, you can actually throw it fifth, uh, since fire two is gonna burn through three thousand of your MP, thirty percent. So uh, this is a thousand. The first fire two is free. The second fire two will bring you down to uh, seven thousand, uh, four thousand. And then a thousand, and you can throw your flare. So that's your first way of doing things. After the flare goes off, you can throw the mana font into another flare, and then you can throw mega ether into another flare. So you can do three flares back to back. If you get confused, just look at the uh, the bottom of the video subscription. You should be able to see rotations for the certain level. Uh, but some people don't like to do this. Some people just like to skip to the flare itself. And for that, you basically just do flare after the first fire 2, which is a buff. After the first fire 2 goes off, flare into the mana font, and then we flare again. And then if you have a potion, like the Mega Aether, you can throw that into a third flare. So those are your options. Uh, welcome to Heaven's Word, Grasshopper. Black Mage is becoming slightly better, but we still gotta get there, so you guys have to grind through the levels before we actually get some fun stuff, uh, but we have uh, have to start somewhere, right? At level 52, we get Ley Lines. Let's go through this stuff fast, so you guys have to grind through it slowly, but I will go through it fast. Connects naturally occurring Ley Lines to create a circle of power, which, while standing within it, reduces the spell cast and recast and auto attack delay by 15%. You basically gain 15% damage uh, because you're casting stuff a lot faster than usual. Uh, it has a 120 second recast. Anytime this is available, you want to use it. Uh, the issue is the fact that if you're using this and the target dies too fast, uh, so like dungeons and the, the tank pulls enemies and you pop this down, 
and the enemies die within like five seconds you you wasted ley lines you want to make sure that you're at least using 15 or 20 seconds of this timer uh, in order for ley lines to become useful uh your the rotation is pretty much the same uh, we're going to be basically chucking ley lines after your fire three so it's going to be pushed back we may as well remove this you guys understand how that works at this point and we're going to be using ley lines right here so ley lines goes off after the fire three once you've buffed yourself up uh, ley line goes off and you just spam fire two just like you've been doing it up until now in terms of the aoe it's the same thing it goes right after your first fire two so between these two right here the idea is buff your character first then put the ley lines don't worry too much about clipping your global cooldown black mage is designed to do so sharp cast at level 54 on single target is used strictly on your fire one uh, don't worry too much about the description on this do not use this on scathe for whatever reason uh, and do not use the thundercloud effect from sharp cast on single target you do not use that on single target on the single target all you're going to be doing is you're going to be using let me go ahead and remove that you're going to be using sharp cast on your fire one move that forward that goes no that actually stays and then this goes here as soon as you use it on your fire one you're going to get a free fire starter proc so the proc goes off and you get a free fire three before we throw the ley lines you need to wait a little bit so your global cooldown gets back up and then you throw the ley lines because if you throw it immediately after the free fire three uh, it is instant cast so you're going to be standing there for a second or two basically wondering what you did wrong so we're going to hit this guy i'm going to hit that guy when i run out of targets and hopefully i don't die to the raid from this fate uh, let's go ahead and get this over with so blizzard 3 into the thunder and then fire 3 sharp cast fire 1 toss the instant fire 3 and then we wait a bit and then we throw the ley lines we're going to do another fire 1 we get closer and then we throw the mana form and then we just burn our mana let's see if i don't die instantly to this guy yeah he does a lot of damage I don't think I'm supposed to beat this guy by myself, but I remember. Yeah, I, I think you guys kind of understand. This 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 rotation isn't supposed to be used too much. You're basically just trying to get to level 60. I am out of here before I die. <laughs> catch you guys. Uh, uh, catch you guys later. Uh, we're back. Uh, I'm not gonna get too close to him. He's he's gonna smack me down like last time. We're we're pretty stupid. Uh, I'm pretty stupid at this stuff, but yeah, we gotta finish this. We gotta finish this. Okay. Uh, sharp cast during AOE. You guys understand how the Mega Ether works and you know how it functions at this point. It gives you just enough MP for you to th to throw an extra flare during your AOE. Uh, so with that idea, let's go ahead and remove this because we need a bit of space. So we're going to move this back. And this is basically where you're going to throw your sharp cast. So this goes there. Okay. Sharp cast goes right after the blizzard 2. And then we're going to throw another thundercloud 2 because this will give us the thundercloud, uh, thundercloud effect. Uh, giving us a free thunder proc so it's pretty straightforward you toss the sharp cast toss the the, the full casted thunder 2 and then you immediately throw the instant cast thunder 2 resetting the timer and also doing the full damage of the otherwise uh, lengthy damage over time on it if you don't want to use the fire 2s just like I do just go ahead and you know immediately press ley lines into your flare and then you know follow up with a mana font into the flare and then the potion into the flare so just as a example 
Let's go ahead and pick this guy. I'm synced. Let's do a a Blizzard two. We're in a sharp cast. Just imagine it's AOE. We're gonna thunder and immediate thunder again. We're gonna press the fire two, and then we're gonna lay lines. One, two, and three. Target died, so let's see if there's anything nearby. And then the flare. And after that, mana fonts. And a flare again. And potion. And a flare once more. And then just press the blizzard 2 and rinse and renew. Okay. Now, uh, level 56, we get a Nokian. It's a trait now. Increases damage by 5% while under the effect of the Astral Fire or Umbro Ice. Uh, when using the Fire 2 while under the effect of the Astral Fire, it grants the Enhanced Flare. Flare does a little bit more damage. And in the Enhanced Flare effect uh, ends if the Astral Fire is lost. So, no Astral Fire, no Enhanced Flare, no Flare, period. All right, level 58, we get the Enhanced Freeze, and also we get uh, Blizzard 4. Uh, let's talk about the Enhanced Freeze first, since we're talking about uh, Flare. Flare is contributing to the AoE. Grants three Umbro Hearts upon casting Freeze. What does the Umbro Hearts do during AoE? Uh, nullifies Astral Fire's MP cost, increase her Fire Spells, uh, reduces the MP cost for Flare by one-third. So effectively uh, letting you cast Flare twice. Okay, so I may not be able to show you guys a single target rotation, but it's pretty straightforward. Instead of the Freeze, we throw a Blizzard, and then we throw a uh, Thunder 3, and then a Fire 3, and then we Sharp Cast into the Fire 1. Uh, and then from there we chuck our... What was it again? And then from there we chuck our... Fire 3, reposition forward for A ley lines. Um, make sure that you delay the ley lines so uh, you don't stand there for a second or two looking stupid. <laughs> and then just, you know, start chucking fire ones. I think it's fourth fire one. You chuck the fourth fire one, and then the uh, mana font is efficient because your first three fire ones are going to be reduced in mana cost wise uh, the fire three proc is free as well this lets you relocate your character and after that your fourth fire one will be full mana cost price of 1600 in which your mana font uh, uh, it is below the 7,000 threshold at that point. And then from there, just spam your Fire 1 spells and watch out for the Fire 3 proc. All right, level 60 Black Mage. Uh, this is pretty much the rotation. Uh, let me explain before I jump into a dungeon hosted by my FC members. Thank you for helping out. Uh, the first thing we check is the Blizzard 3, naturally, to get our Umbro Ice going, and then we throw the Blizzard 4 to get three Umbro Hearts. This will, just like previously mentioned, We'll reduce the MP cost of fire spells. Uh, since we're not using flare, we don't have to worry about that. After that, we do a thunder three. We don't use sharp cast on thunder during single target. And then we throw the fire three for the astral fire. After that, we sharp cast into the fire one so we can get a free fire three. We don't throw it immediately. Fire three is now going to be used to reset the astral fire timer uh, to basically enable us to do more spells, more 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 damage. We're going to be using Fire 4 instead. Uh, fire 4 is going to do more damage uh, than Fire 1 and deals fire damage to the potency of 310 flat uh, without the damage bonus. Uh, can only be executed while under the effect of the Astral Fire. This does not reset the Astral Fire timer. Uh, reason being we're, we're going to be throwing the Fire 3 much later on in the rotation, so hold on to it. So at this point we can use swift cast if you're in a eight man content or a savage extreme whatever you want to call it we can swift cast immediately after the fire one and throw our first fire four now the fire four is going to place ourselves uh, into a decent position where we can relocate our character 
Uh, and so we can be near the healer and other DPSs that can buff us. So that's where we're going to be doing with that. This is instant cast. So it's going to basically let you move around a bit for a second or two. We're not going to do anything here. Um, that's the reason why I left it blank. Because we want to be pressing the ley lines after. So don't do anything. Wait till your GCD comes back up. Your global cooldown. And then press the ley lines in a relatively safe place if you don't know the the boss's mechanics you you're, you're going to learn <laughs> one way or another press the ley lines and then we're going to spam fire four we're going to do it two more times so the first fire one will cost 800 mp the first fire four will cost 800 so that's two umbral hearts the third fire four will cost 800 as well so that's the third umbral heart removed the fourth, or I should say the third Fire 4, will cost a full 1600, at which case we press the Mana Font. We cast another Fire 4 and we immediately throw the Fire 3. So that will reset the, the Astral Fire timer. And then from here, just spam Fire 4 till you run out of MP, and then you cast the Blizzard 3 to reset into Blizzard 4 for Umbro Hearts again. And I will see you guys in a dungeon hosted by my FC members up against a random boss. Alright, this will be a single target uh, opener for, for a black mage. We died so many times in this. Anyway, uh, just follow the buttons on prompt on the screen if you guys are confused as to what to do or you just want a rotation. That's what those are for. Uh, I will try to explain as best I can while I do them. Uh, Blizzard 3 and then we Blizzard 4. Uh, Thunder 3, Fire 3, Shark Cast, Fire 1, we Swift Cast, Fire 4, Reposition, Ley Lines, 1, Fire 4, 2, Fire 4, Mana Font, nope, let's do the Fire 3 here, Reset Timer, and now we just do 4 Fire 4s in a row. We got a Thunder proc here. Not enough time for the fourth Fire 4. Let's go ahead and reset. Now let's just do a standard 3 Fire 4s into a Fire 1, because you don't have Shark Cast. And then 3 more Fire 4s. I will show you guys a standard rotation for when you don't actually have your abilities. Okay, we thunder him. Fire 3, now that we have sharp cast, sharp cast into the fire 1. We swift cast again to reposition. And then we do three fire threes, or three fire fours. Into the fire three. And then burn our mana until we reset. One. And two. Let's reset. I'm not using potions because potions, uh, you need something that gives you enough mana in order to use the fire four. And that is going to be level 60 single target. Let's move on. Okay, so standard rotation for when you don't have sharp cast, you don't have ley lines, or even swift cast. The idea is you're still going to do your normal opener. So the Blizzard 3 goes off, the Blizzard 4 goes off, not that one, this one. Blizzard 4 goes off, the Thunder goes off, and then the Fire 3 goes off. <clears throat> After that, we're going to just do uh, three sets of Fire 4s two and three and then do a fire one to reset astro fire sometimes you might get a fire three proc off of this uh, you can chuck it immediately afterwards or hold on to it just make sure you throw it before the blizzard reset okay copy uh, after that we're going to do just three more fire fours to empty out our an our mana and then just switch throw your blizzard three again uh, once you go through this and you go and you hit the blizzard 3 again, I believe you should get sharp cast uh, back along with swift cast. 
So it's going to be one set of your opener that you saw earlier. And then it's going to be one set of this without, you know, the actual helping of SharpCast and, and SwiftCast. And then once you reset on this blizzard right here, you should have them again when you go and do your opener once more. Okay, upon reaching level 60, uh, this is going to be your AoE opener. Uh, we start off with the sharp cast, we throw the blizzard 2, and then we throw the freeze. Let me go ahead and get a little bit closer right here. Uh, sharp cast and blizzard 2. We throw the freeze for the Umbra Heart. And then we throw the Thunder 2. We hold on to the Thunder proc. We're going to throw... You can throw two Fire 2s. Uh, but I will throw three. And then we throw that Thunder proc. Swift cast. First, Flare. Ley Lines. Second, Flare. Mana Font. Third, Flare. Mega Aether, fourth flare, and then hard reset with the Blizzard 2. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. Freeze. We don't have a sharp cast, so just do a regular Thunder 2. Two and three. Get out of that. Or get out of this too. I'm hitting two targets, but this is basically AoE. And then we do flare, back to back. Oh, I'm getting hit by that. Uh, another flare. You kind of get the idea. Okay, uh, moving on to Stormblood. At level 62, we get between the lines and move instantly two ley lines drawn by you cannot be executed while bound. In other words, while you're stunned. Or just rooted in ground. Uh, instant cast, three second recast. So this is similar to the uh, theory manipulation used on your party members, but this is used on your ley lines while it's active uh, during the 30 seconds. Uh, and it doesn't require you to actually, you know, select a party member itself. Uh, so this basically helps you uh, negate telegraphs. You can run away from the telegraphs if they're if they're jumped right on top of your ley lines. You can move out of the way of telegraphs and then between the lines back to your ley lines. Uh, that's the most uh, the most obvious use of it. Uh, other uses entail you ignoring knockback mechanics. If if the mechanic knocks you away, if you respond fast enough, you can between the lines back to your ley lines. Uh, the same pertains to uh, drawing effects. So if bosses, you know, try to draw you into a certain telegraph on the ground or, or towards the center and your ley lines is further away, you can just between the lines as you get drawn in. Uh, don't do it too soon because you're, you're, you're just going to ignore it and don't do it too late because you may have uh, fallen off the edge or, you know, other things that might kill you. Uh, but that's basically between the lines. Alright, at level 66 we get triple cast, similar to swift cast, it lets you chuck out long cast spells for the instant instead. Uh, you get three segments of it, so you, you press the triple cast, let's cast uh, three normal spells, so, such as fire one, it'll come out instantly. And the triple cast has two charges, so bear that in mind. Alright, there's nothing else in... 68, but we didn't get foul at 70. Uh, deals magic damage to target an all nearby enemies with a potency of 560 for the first enemy and 60% loss for all remaining enemies. Comprise a polyglot cost of one. The polyglot is basically what you get from maintaining your astral fire and your umbro ice timer, you know, till it resets. Once it resets, you get a polyglot charge, and that means you can toss your foul during combat. At your level, it is not instant, so you need to fully charge it, and it's going to take some time. Not too sure exactly on the charge time, but you need to stand there for a few seconds, I'm sure. <laughs> the file, where to use it, where to put it in your rotation. Anytime you're about to do your Blizzard 3 into Blizzard 4 and Thunder 3, that's a good time for foul. So, 
if I can find the, uh, the buttons here. So anytime you're doing this setup, where's the Blizzard 3? There we go. Anytime you're doing this setup, whether it's in the, uh, uh, whether you finish your rotation and you're back to a reset and you're back to doing this stuff because your mana has depleted completely, that's a good time for foul. Anytime you've reset your Astral Fire timer and you don't have any other charges such as um, Thunder Cloud charges and you have a Fire 3 instant uh, available for you to reset your, uh, your Astral Fire timer, that's a good time for foul. Anytime you can ensure yourself that you won't lose the, uh, the Astro Fire or Umbro Ice timer, you have a foul shot. Just make sure you use it because it, they do not stack. You can only hold up to one polyglot charge right now. So make sure you use it, don't lose it. All right, this is going to be very time consuming, but if you are level 70 and you wanna learn a raid rotation, then uh, we're gonna go through it. <laughs> Otherwise, just skip to the next level if you guys don't wanna bother with this stuff. But if you are progressing through the levels and you are level 70 and you want a decent rotation, this is basically going to be it. So it's similar to level 60. Uh, we're just going to start off with the usual thing uh, and then Blizzard 4, Thunder 3. We're going to incorporate Foul and Triple Cast into the rotation. It's going to change up a few things but uh, we're still casting nine spells along with the mana fonts. Uh, fire 1 being one of the nine but the rest of them are going to be Fire 4s. Uh, then we cast a Fire 3 and then we Sharp Cast at this stage, you only have one charge of sharp cast. And then we cast a fire one. When the fire one goes through, we're going to do a swift cast, similar to level 60. And then we'll chuck our first fire four. After that, we're going to do a triple cast. Uh, it's, it's basically uh, casting one spell, but it gives you three swift casts back to back. Uh, so we're going to chuck three more fire fours. Uh, the reason I'm delaying ley lines is because uh, triple cast. Anytime you do a a instant cast spell, you do not want to do ley lines. Ley lines speeds up the full cast. Uh, instant casts do not have full cast; they are shorter. There's no need for you to overlap the two. You can if you want to, but this is uh, this is a pretty decent rotation for the level seventy. So after the triple cast of you doing three fire fours back to back, we're going to hard cast uh, one more fire four just to squeeze it in there. Uh, and then we're going to do a fire three off your sharp cast fire one prog fire starter. Uh, there's the free fire three that goes through. At this point, we just tossed a instant cast spell, just like the, 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 the triple cast fire fours up here. But this is your fire three proc. We're going to immediately do a single weave mana font and a double weave ley lines to put it down. Since we've run out of instant cast spells, we can now do our ley lines. Ley lines goes down and we're going to do three more fire fours, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Three more fire fours. This rotation has two segments. I will put the entire segment in the uh, video's description, but I need to delete this in order to put the second segment down so you guys can get the full uh, rotation on one screen, basically. Uh, because we need to talk about the second charge of triple cast and where to throw it. So that's basically uh, the main concern for the second, the second part of this rotation. So after you've casted all, all of these fire fours, you're going to do a reset with a blizzard. This is a good time for foul. Foul should be um, available around here. Around you casting your last three fire fours, foul should be available. So we're going to throw the foul. Throw the foul anytime you get a reset. Throw the foul. And then we do a blizzard four, a thunder three, and then the full reset of astral fire. This is the first segment, so I'm going to uh, delete this segment uh, and then we'll do continuation from this fire three. Not that one, okay? We no longer have sharp cast and we no longer have swift cast or ley lines, okay? 
We no longer have any of these three, but we do have a charge of triple cast. We also don't have mana fonts. All right, let's move on. All right, continuation from the fire three, this one, we're going to delete everything. So no ley lines, no sharp cast, uh, no swift cast, and no mana fonts. All right, we're going to continuation from the fire three that we just did the reset. So if in conclusion, this should look like what is the continuation. Uh, so from the fire three, we're going to do uh, three sets of fire, uh, fire fours, two and three, and then we'll cast the fire one to reset our astral fire time. So, so we don't have a, a uh, fire starter proc of fire three instant, uh, we have to throw the fire one. Uh, remember the level 60 uh, constant rotation, we'll be doing that right here. So we throw the fire one and then we instantly throw our, where is it, triple cast. Uh, right here is around a time where ley lines should be expiring. Less than five seconds, uh, roughly. Depends on your on your spell speed. But this is a pretty good time for ley lines to be expiring soon. If there's a telegraph on your ley lines, go ahead and ignore ley lines at this point. It served this purpose well. Uh, thank you, ley lines. We're going to do a triple cast, and then we'll burn the rest of our mana on three more fire fours. So that's basically the strategy for that. Uh, just remember the foul should be back up again soon. Uh, the, the, the bar itself will always continuously move uh, every 30 seconds. It'll reset back to one. So you need to make sure that you throw that foul. So we're going to go back to the opening. And we should have uh, swift cast and this, the first charge of triple cast should almost be available again. So we're going to renew uh, from the beginning. It's going to be a blizzard three a blizzard four make sure you throw the foul if it's available and then we're going to do a thunder three into the fire three at this point we have the uh, sharp cast so go ahead and throw the sharp cast into a fire one and then we renew again with the uh, swift cast fire four and then triple cast out Three more five fours. Uh, so that's basically the continuation of the previous rotation and also a complete reset of your opener. So from this point on, just watch out for ley lines. If ley lines comes back up again, you need to make sure that you're not using triple cast because the two do not want to mesh. So as soon as your triple cast expires, then press your ley lines. Don't worry too much about. Uh, clipping your global cooldown, what that means is you, you cast a full cast spell, you do a ability such as uh, a sharp cast. Don't worry about that. Black Mage is designed to clip the, the GCD. Uh, and this is uh, basically part two of the rotation. I'm going to uh, just, just make sure you save these two to a... a uh, just, just keep the two on, on tab or, or just look at the uh, part of the video description and for the full rotation i'll i'll put it down when i remember honestly <laughs> but uh just just keep tabs on this stuff and uh, we're gonna jump into an example all right this is an example hopefully i get it right on the first time i'm still used to level 90 black mage so do mind if i make a mistake uh we're gonna start off with the rotation blizzard three blizzard four under three Fire three, sharp cast, fire one. Swift cast, fire four, triple cast, three more fire fours. It's one, two, and three. Hard cast, fire four. Fire three, and a font ley lines. Don't worry about the thunder procs. One, two, and three. Let's do the thunder proc here, move out of the way. Do a reset. Foul. Blizzard 4. We already did the thunder, so skip the fire. Okay. One fire four, two fire four, three fire four. We toss the fire one. Thunder proc. Triple cast. Let's get the hell out of that. 
One, two, and three. Let's do that. We may as well throw this since we did reset. Okay, let's reset completely. Lizard four. That's pretty low, so let's renew. Just get out of that. I think we get it. Yep. Uh, this is pretty much reset, so let's do the swift cast. Uh, sharp cast, fire one. Swift cast, fire four. Yeah, you kind of get the idea. So once we hit 70, our, our AoE rotation. Let me sink down. So once we hit 70, our AoE rotation kind of uh, becomes slightly easier for us to manage. Uh, firstly, we're going to uh, move our ley lines back slightly because we now have triple cast. Uh, so this goes there. Uh, and then we're going to do... Uh, so we do... It's similar. Similarities. Uh, we have the upgraded thunder. We have the triple cast. So uh, that goes there. And then a second. Uh, we do four flares back to back. Let's go ahead and do put that back there. So this is basically it right here. And then the delayed ley lines. Uh, so that's it. Um, anytime you get a foul, just make sure you throw it uh, during the rotation. If you're running through content, you're going to have a bunch of foul stacks. Uh, just make sure you throw the fouls. Uh, make sure you do not hold on to it, otherwise you'll lose the stack. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Once the uh, delay lines goes through, you're just going to rinse and renew with the, with the Blizzard 2 again. Uh, until, you know, until further notice. Most targets typically die. Uh, once you do a reset so the ley lines might not be necessary and it might also be overkill if you do ley lines um, so let's do that into a blizzard and a two freeze thunder four we'll hold the proc just like the little 60 one uh, you can do two or three it really depends on to you then we throw the proc into swift and triple one flare, two flare, mana font, three flare, and potion. I don't have one, but you kind of get the idea. Uh, when that goes through, just uh, pop the blizzard. The targets are still alive, and then we're going in with the ley lines uh, into a blizzard, blizzard two. Basically, just redo the opener. No sharp cast, so just do a regular. Thunder into your fire twos. I'm gonna do two fire twos this time. And then our flare if I can find another target. I gotta get out of ley lines here. Okay, so we have a foul, it just reset, so we lost the, the proc. So that's something you have to be wary of. <clears throat> okay, let's throw the other flare. And then back with the reset. So moving right along, this is going to be uh, 72 through 81. So Heaven's Word. No, not Heaven's Word. <laughs> Shadowbringers. Uh, the beginning of Shadowbringers has you obtaining Despair from a quest. Uh, make sure you unlock this. Make sure you unlock this. This is very important to have. Uh, Despair is similar to Flare in a way, but not so similar. Uh, it still has the similar uh, MP cost as Flare, uh, the minimum being 800. You can cast the spare with 800 MP. Uh, deals fire damage with opponents, you have 340, grants the Astral Fire 3, duration of 15 seconds. So the spare also resets your Astral Fire timer, just similar to Fire 1 or Fire 3. Um, this guy will eat all of your MP, whether you have Umbral Hearts or not. So that's the difference between despair and flare so despair will always eat all of your remaining NP, even if you have one umbral heart you know so despair how is it used in a rotation um just a small glimpse of how this is used uh have you noticed how you always end up with just a little slither amount of mp every time your your rotation is about to hit the reset where you throw the the blizzard spell uh, we're going to use that little sliver amount of MP. It's typically somewhere between uh, 1200, 1500 MP around there. As long as it's 800 or higher, 
that means we can use the spare. So we're pretty low on MP after burning through all of our mana with, with the fire fours. Uh, we used the despair. So fire four. This fire four indicates you know you're down to like 1200 MP for an example. Uh, it's just above 800 MP, so it fulfills the requirement. So we throw the despair. Despair goes out, so we throw a mana font. That's the reason why mana font is delayed so much because we want to extend um, our main source of damage, being our fire spells, and this is now one of them. Uh, after the despair goes off, since this will reset the astral fire timer, that means we can also just chuck more fire fours. Manifont will raise our MP from zero, being despair, dropping it down to zero. Manifont raises it to 3000. That means we can cast a fire four. A cost of 1600. We're down to 400 MP. We're going to cast yet another despair. When the despair goes through, our MP is back to zero. Our astral fire timer is back to 15. And we're going to cast, and we're going to actually throw, similar to the AoE rotation, we're going to throw a Mega Aether. Mega Aether raising our MP back to 800, that means we can do yet another Despair. And at this point, we don't have any other way to recover more MP, um, so we're just going to do a full reset of the Blizzard 3, uh, Blizzard 4. Mind you, while you're doing this, you're resetting your Astro Fire Timer relatively quickly. Uh, so it's a good time for foul as well. So foul, foul pretty much anywhere. If you have multiple charges, if you're about to get multiple charges, you can foul back to back anywhere in here, uh, which is fantastic. And it also lets you move around. Since your Astro Fire, since your Astro Fire Timer is being reset so often, and you're actually running out of MP, there's no reason for you to cast anything. So you can move around and avoid telegraphs. You have plenty of time to do so. It's kind of like a downtime uh, per se, but this lets you do a lot of things. And this is pretty much only available in the opening. So make sure you utilize this and take advantage of it fully uh, before your reset. So there's your casual fire uh, foul after your Blizzard 3. Uh, and this is pretty much the example of despair. We're going to go through this in more deep, well, slightly more detail once we do the uh, level 80 single target rotation. So moving right along with Shadowbringers, at level 74, we get the enhanced sharp cast uh, trait. Uh, reduces the sharp cast recast timer to 30 seconds. Uh, this literally lets you have sharp cast during the opener and then again during the uh, second segment that I showed you guys in the single target uh, rotation for level 70. As long as you throw the sharp cast after your fire 3, sharp cast into fire 1, you should have uh, a charge available for you guys um, whenever it's up. Uh, if not, just wait a few seconds for the sharp cast to be back up again, and then you can throw the fire 1. Just make sure you throw the fire one from the sharp cast. You want to have the instant fire three. Um, I mean, I can show you guys an example, but it's pretty straightforward. You basically do the, the opener all over again, uh, but you don't. You won't have. You won't have you know the ley lines every time. You won't have the swift cast, the triple cast every time. But you will definitely have the sharp cast every time you do a reset. All right, next up is the Umbral Soul, a level 76. Uh, grants Umbral Ice and one Umbral Heart. Umbral Heart bonus nullifies Astral Fire's MP cost. We all know what Umbral Heart is at this point. This is basically a boss phase transition. Uh, it's also used in dungeons. I just started raining. We are in Lakeland, Shadowbringers. Uh, it's also used in dungeons when you want to do a full reset, similar to us using transpose way back in the lower levels. Uh, we transpose from a fire, uh, from astral fire, we transpose and then we basically spam uh, umbral soul to get ourselves ready again. What this enables us to do is we ignore uh, the, the, the blizzard 2. We can ignore the blizzard 2. And we can also ignore the freeze because we already have the umbral souls. We can just immediately start chucking 
our thunder spells with the uh, sharp cast so we sharp cast thunder spell and then we immediately uh throw our fire twos so we can disregard uh disregard the freeze disregard the blizzard two as long as you maintain uh, the umbral soul make sure you spam this a couple times so you can max out and this will also let you maintain your foul charges uh, throughout the dungeon or throughout the boss transitions if you need to for whatever reason pop the umbral uh, the umbral the umbral soul it's great to do so during a raid encounter with a boss because uh, it lets you run around during at, during umbral ice and you can just keep pressing the umbral soul to reset the the umbral ice timer uh, it, so it's it's very useful but it also if you use it too often this is killing your dps so be very mindful of this extremely mindful okay it's still raining for me i love the sound uh, very ambient music uh, at level 78, we get enhanced Enochian 2. Uh, it basically increases the Enochian damage uh, up to 15% now. As long as you're maintaining the Astral Fire Umber Ice, you should get that bonus. You don't really need to regard it. But at level 80, we get Xenoglossy. And at level 80 as well, we also get the Enhanced Flow. Uh, the Enhanced Foul uh, allows for the immediate casting of Foul. So Foul should be instant as soon as you hit level 80. But you will need to unlock Xenoglossy. Deals magic damage with a potency of 760. Uh, it is instant cast and is basically used on a single target. Requires the polyglot cost. So this is your single target variant of Foul. And Foul is used on pretty much two or more targets. If the potency serves correctly. Uh, so this will move 560 and 60% less. For, yeah, Foul is used on two targets. And then Xenoglossy is just used on a single target. Now, if there's two targets and one of them is about to die, just use the Xenoglossy. Remember, things die relatively fast when you're playing Black Mage. Uh, so try to maximize your uh, your utility as fast as possible. Uh, Xenoglossy in single target rotation is fantastic because it's also instant cast. And it lets you move around, basically. The best time to use Xenoglossy uh, is during... Anytime you have uh, a, uh, anytime you need to cast something, you can disregard the fire four and just use Xenoglossy. Uh, there are certain times when you need to uh, do a full reset. So doing the the Xenoglossy instead of having to hard cast the fire four is definitely something that you could do to avoid telegraphs. There's there's a bunch of little mis little things that you uh, disregard when it comes to playing Black Mage. You're going to be making a lot of uh, changes in your rotation. Just make sure that you reset when you need to. Do not lose the Astral Fire Umbro Ice Timer. You have options now. You have uh, you have the the Despair. You have the Fire Three during Astral Fire. You have uh, uh, just a hard reset uh, with the Blizzard. And during the Umbral Ice, you also have the Umbral Soul. It's all designed so you to, uh, for you to maintain the uh, the Umbral Ice and then the Astral Fire. Oh yeah, before we move on, I forgot. Yeah, level 80, you on top of you getting the Enhanced Foul and Xenoglossy, you also have an Enhanced Polyglot. Uh, so your character can now hold on to two charges of your Polyglot. You can effectively uh, do what the the default playstyle is of holding on to two charges and then blowing both of them during your uh, your despair spam in the opener. Uh, you can just uh, anytime you use the the reset to for five for astral fire, you can go ahead and throw both of them. Uh, it's still similar to what I mentioned before. Once we got the foul. Make sure, make sure that you do not hold on to more than two of them because uh, we do have two charges now, but it does not go beyond two. So make sure you use it or you lose it. Welcome. This is going to be a black mage up to a level 80. Well, this is actually a level 80 single target rotation. Uh, I'm going to basically explain to you how this all works. 
And uh, this is just being the first segment. Uh, from here we're going to do the second segment, just like uh, the level 70 one. And I will show you guys the detail behind it. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so I removed the rotation on the screen. Let's go ahead and go through what the hell just happened there. Uh, so the opener is still the same from level 60. Uh, we're still doing the relatively same stuff. Uh, doing that into this, and then we sharp cast. You should only have one charge of sharp cast, but it should be uh, on a 30 second timer now. Uh, if you are level 80. Uh, let's see, and then we throw a fire one, and then we swift cast a fire four, similar to 70. And then we triple cast uh, three fire fours in a row. Once that goes through, we're going to hard cast one more fire four. You should be at roughly six, five to six seconds on your astral fire timer while you're casting this. As soon as that goes off, we're going to toss our uh, fire starter proc from the sharp cast fire one. We're going to throw it here to reset the astral fire. Similar stuff that we've done up until now. We're going to wait. Wait, similar to level 60. We're going to wait and place our ley lines. Um, make sure you do not throw it immediately, similar to level 60. Uh, we're not throwing our mana fawn here because we're going to use it for despair. Uh, so after that, we're doing two more fire fours. And then we're tossing our despair. So uh, mana wise, as soon as you throw the second fire four after ley lines, your mana should be at 1200. Now here's the thing about black mage. Going from the full reset of blizzard three to fire three um, if your spell speed is fast enough you can actually clip your G your your mana regen in general and you might not end up with exactly 10,000 mp uh, in which case let's say for example you've casted you know you've casted your first fire four after ley lines you're down to 2,000 mp uh, and you're thinking of casting you know this ley line or this fire four you need to think math, okay? If you cast another Fire 4, your MP value is no longer going to be at 1200. It's now going to be at 400. And 400 is not for despair. It's not enough for a despair. So instead of casting that Fire 4, you need to cast the despair. <laughs> so do a little bit of math and realize where your mana is before you, before you start casting stuff. Uh, and it will help you on... It's going to be a pain in the ass, but it's good muscle memory. You need to do some math when you're playing Black Mage. It's not just, you know, brain dead Black Mage. You gotta do some math. After the first despair goes off, then we do a mana font into another Fire 4, because we just recovered MP, and then into a second despair. Despair goes off, so the MP value back to zero. We're going to chuck our potion our Mega Aether, and then we do a third Despair. So after the opener, this is basically the opener. After the opener is over, we're going to go back and do the second segment. Uh, you guys can save this onto your HUD or just look at the bottom of the video's description. When I get to it, I will post it all in within the rotation segment. All right, this is going to be the second segment. I've uh, my, my voice is getting worse and worse and I'm starting to get a headache, so I, I apologize ahead, ahead of time. Uh, so once you've burned through all of your despair charges, uh, you no longer have an easy way to maintain your astral fire timer. Uh, but the game kind of makes it easy for you to maintain your uh, kind of your equilibrium of sorts to max out your DPS. Basically, you want to be casting nonstop. Um, during your Astro Fire timer, once the reset goes through, you have plenty of time to dodge and weave telegraphs. And there's going to be a couple of level 80 enemies that are going to set up a lot of telegraphs. Um, during the Astro Fire timer, as long as you have a good solid 10 seconds, you can just stop DPSing altogether and avoid telegraphs. You know, just try not to die. 
That's basically the whole purpose of you know back to back, uh, triple casting, instant cast spells, uh, maintaining ley lines on the ground and using between the lines, and of course uh, theory manipulation. Things are going to get complicated the, the higher the, the content you do naturally. Now with this segment, we're going to jump into uh, the lighter half of the uh, rotation. Uh, you should have a sharp cast available for you here shortly. should be roughly around 10-15 seconds. Uh, actually less because you went through all the despairs and all the, all the openers. So you should have a sharp cast ready for you already. Uh, so we just go back and do a reset uh, with the Blizzard 3 and then we do our uh, Blizzard 4 reset. The similar stuff that we used to do back in level 60. Uh, and then after that the fire. So we toss the sharp cast that should be back again into our fire one. From here we only have one charge of triple cast. We do not need to delay it anymore uh, as the reason being casting your ley lines and going through all these despairs in the opener uh, basically made it so that the ley lines have completely um, exited your system basically so the ley lines should should be uh, expired at this point so you can go ahead and do a triple cast now at this point also you need to realize that your Thunder procs, and as well as the new Xenoglossy serve a purpose of you um, putting your character on cooldown and having to throw uh, your OGCDs more efficiently. So a, a good example, you won't get this all the time, but if uh, Thunder proc uh, occurs uh, and you're still holding on to the Thunder proc, which is really not your concern anymore to throw thunder procs every single time you get them but if there's a thunder proc you can throw it after your sharp cast into fire one you can thunder proc this should go off instantly and then you can throw triple cast into something like a room wide uh, so like an adel you can adel a room wide and you can triple cast into your next set of fire fours so there's there's a there's a lot of little things that you can do. Uh, so obviously instead of the thunder the thunder proc, uh, the more common thing you would be doing is uh, using Xenoglossy here to get yourself uh, down on the global cooldown. So you can then use uh, double weaving stuff. And other than that, everything else is pretty much similar. You're burning your MP all the way down. You're throwing your uh, fire three proc from the sharp cast. Uh, to maintain Astral Fire, similar to uh, level 70, really not much changes. Uh, so a good example is here, the Xenoglossy. I'll leave it up as a good example. Uh, so we Adel or Room Wide into Triple Cast, and then we toss our Fire Fours. We throw a uh, another Fire Four, because there's enough time into the Fire Starter Fire 3 Instant. Uh, that goes off uh, we're able to uh, move around a bit we can throw uh, we can throw thunder procs if we have them we just reset our astral our astral fire with this so we're going to burn our mp again uh, until we have uh, adequate enough low mp in order to throw despair so that's pretty much all there is to it uh, just follow the level 70 rotation the Xenoglossy is single target now, it's instant. It lets you do things like this. Uh, it lets you uh, throw Thunder procs instead of Xenoglossy if you don't have a charge. Uh, it lets you just maintain things a little bit easier. If you really want an entire rotation, it should be in the description when I get to it. Okay, let's get. Let's see if I get this right the first time. It's slightly different from 90, but not too different. Right, where, where I might choke, but that, that's always an option when you're jumping between jobs as often as I do. Okay, let's do it. There's a three, there's a four, another three, five, three, 
Sharp cast, fire one. Move forward. Swift cast, fire three. Triple cast, fire three. Fire three. Fire three. Or fire four, I guess. Instant fire three procs go off. And then lay lines. Fire four, despair. Xeno glossy manifold. Fire four, despair. Mega ether. No thunder three proc, so just GCD clip. Alright. Just making sure. Move out of the way. Sharp cast. We're gonna run the proc. Get behind the team. And three. Run the proc. Fire three reset. Sure cast. One, two, and three reset. Move into position. On the proc. Get out of that. Let's toss a Xeno Glossy as we move around a bit. Let's hold the other one so we can do our Swift Cast triple. Shark Cast, Thunder 3 is already up. Xeno Glossy Swift triple. One, two, three, four. I'm watching my Astro Fire. Okay. Let's so move out of position. Fire three to reset timer. One. And then two. Despair. Dino Glossy. Adel. Okay. Reset again. Under three. You kind of get the idea. It's very, very complicated at first, but you need to, you need to time yourself. So things don't get too overcomplicated. All right, level 80. Uh, the AOE rotation is literally identical to this. Uh, things are more streamlined. So what I recommend is removing one of the fire twos. Uh, your rotation should be a bit smoother. Uh, honest to goodness. There we go. That's pretty much it. Uh, after the ley lines expires, you're going to be throwing the triple cast. I, I probably forgot to mention that in the level 70, but make sure you throw that triple cast. Uh, I could probably just give you an example, or you can just repeat what you did at level 70. Just remove one of the fire twos. Uh, you should only see two on your rotation. Uh, it's going to be slightly faster. You're going to focus on your flare. Flare is gonna, what's going to be doing most of the damage. Not the, not the fire two. Fire two is just a setup. All right, final stretch, everyone. I'm pretty sure you know what's uh, ha happening here if you saw the, the previous segment. Uh, Aspect Mastery 4, level 82. Upgrades your Fire 2 to High Fire 2, and the Blizzard 2 to the High Blizzard 2. I kind of gave it away early in, in the previous segment, but these fire, the Fire 2, I'm clicking it and dragging it to your hotbar, it's upgraded to High Fire 2. Uh, it's basically just fancier animation and higher potency. There's really not much to it, uh, as well as the high Blizzard 2. Uh, same thing. There's really no uh, no slight difference in mechanic. You're going to use it just like it's uh, it's just like uh, Blizzard 2 or Fire 2. It really doesn't change anything in the AOE rotation department. Let's move on. All right, at level 84, we get the enhanced mana font. Cuts the uh, cooldown timer from 180 to uh, 120 on the mana fonts. Uh, kind of coordinates a little bit easier with the, the rotation, but it really just makes it so that you do mana font more often uh, because it's uh, used in a little bit more strange manner than we used to do, you know, previous to level 70 or 60. Uh, after that, we also get the uh, traits at level 86, the enhanced Enochian 3, which also uh, increases um, damage from the Enochian uh, up to 20% now, as long as you maintain a timer. 
as well as, well as a amplifier uh, grants polyglot it can only be executed while under the effect of the astral fire or umbro ice uh, press it whenever you get into combat uh, and make sure that you burn the charges it basically gives us an extra charge as soon as you're in combat press it and make sure you press it again when it becomes available that's there's really no other way to explain this At level 88, we get the Enhanced Sharp Cast 2. It allows the accumulation of a second charge of Sharp Cast, and this guy's going to have 30 second cooldown just like the other one. Uh, and I bet you're wondering, why do we need a second Sharp Cast? Isn't the 130 second enough? Well, we want to be able to throw the Sharp Cast before the fight begins, so uh, typically before the, the tank pulls, uh, it's pretty good to pop the Sharp Cast. Uh, so we use it, we use two charges. Uh, the first one goes on a thunder, uh, a thunder three. So we apply the uh, the thunder cloud proc. Uh, and you're wondering why would I do that? Doesn't it go on the on the fire starter? It does. It does go on the fire starter. But we have two charges now. Uh, as soon as you hit level 88, uh, so it looks something like this. Uh, Blizzard four. Uh, you can use it pretty much any time uh, before the opening. You can use it here. Uh, or you can use it into the thunder itself uh, it really doesn't matter uh, if you use it into the thunder you're gonna clip your GCD naturally but if you use it before the fight begins uh, the tank might be confused and you may need to let everybody know to <laughs> that you are waiting for your cooldown to come back up again but there should be enough time for this guy uh, to run off the duration is 30 seconds so this should come back up in 30 seconds the issue being is popping this into these two uh, before the thunder so this is the ideal way to use it but that is up to your playstyle concern i typically just do this uh, this is a little bit safer for me so after this goes off you are going to get a thunder cloud proc uh, 100 percent so it's definitely there uh, after that we do the fire three and then we sharp cast once more uh, these two are going to go off relatively the same. Uh, another reason why I like to keep them pretty close to each other. Uh, so the timers aren't too, you know, a little bit too far away from each other. Um, but if you use this rotation, make sure you follow up, do the same thing once it comes full circle. Uh, try not to confuse the timers as you do this. Uh, so that goes through and then the fire one goes through Then we get part of the normal rotation. Uh, so the, the sharp cast... Uh, why do you throw it here is because uh, once the fire one goes through then we throw the the sharp uh, the thundercloud proc uh, and then once the the, the thundercloud proc goes through we do uh, swift cast and then triple cast back to back so this is instant cast mm -hmm. that is allowed from the first sharp cast in the opener uh, this lets us throw a thunder uh, thunder three uh, instant cast from our thundercloud proc and that lets us double weave both of both of these back to back so we don't have to clip our gcd right, that's pretty good let's move on all right a final stretch uh level 90 we get paradox uh, i'm gonna go through both variants of paradox and how you should use them uh, basically the reason behind this is uh, the fire one turns into paradox and it kind of gets a little convoluted in the explanation department uh, they they threw way too much stuff at you at, at once for just one spell but uh, let's just go through this stuff so the single target uh, i'm going to start off with the opener on the top and then once you've completely drained your your mp uh, we're going to do the second part uh, so let me actually remove that so in the in the starter opener, uh, you're actually going to throw a sharp cast. This is basically uh, going to be the thing from now on, since you have two charges of it. And a sharp cast into the Blizzard 3, and then we toss the Blizzard 4 to get the Umbro Hearts. Uh, that's the first half of our uh, Paradox requirement. Uh, we've effectively started our Blizzard, and then we tossed our Umbro Heart. Uh, so the Paradox is almost ready to go. After this, we throw a Thunder 3 that triggers the Sharp Cast, so we have a, a Thunder Cloud proc. We don't throw it yet. Uh, so the uh, Paradox is not ready, but if we were 
uh, to continue the rotation, and that means the Fire 3. Uh, now Paradox is ready. So you swap from uh, Blizzard 3 having the Umbral Soul uh, into the Fire 3. Swapping completely gives you a Paradox. So your Fire 1 should be Paradox right now. Uh, just similar to the uh, previous rotations, uh, at this point we're going to do the second Sharp Cast that you've been holding on to, and then we're going to throw that Paradox right there. So the Fire 1 is which should be Paradox. This goes through, and then you just continue on with the rotation as you see fit. As soon as this goes through, you're going to toss your Thunder proc from the Thunder Cloud that you got earlier in the rotation. And then from here, you basically do your Swift Cast, Triple Cast, Double Weave, uh, and then you start chucking Fire Fours. So that is basically the opener. Uh, the opener segment is pretty straightforward. It just gets a little convoluted by the fact that uh, this kind of makes it a little uh, complicated and also the sharp cast is thrown in the opener uh, right before you even start casting anything. Uh, this is uh, kind of an homage to the uh, consistency of doing Thundercloud procs instead of Firestarter procs. Uh, a lot of black mages like to do the Thundercloud procs instead of Firestarter. I don't know why people do that. But I, I used to do that myself, and I fixed my arrows. Uh, but, you know, we get to do both now uh, with the uh, double sharp cast. Uh, anyway, once you've, completed the, once you've completely depleted your mana, in other words, uh, the despair goes through. Uh, this is basically at the uh, very end of your opener. You've gone through, you know, mana font. You've gone through your your mega ether potion you've completely depleted all of your mana and your ley lines should be expired and you want to throw uh, your second charge or triple cast i'm not too sure on that segment but as soon as this happens you're in astral fire okay you immediately throw the blizzard three now the second charge of the uh Paradox is now available since we went from the fire to the ice uh, Now we have the second charge available. So we throw a blizzard three and Immediately throw our paradox now the paradox going from fire to ice uh, Will be instant so make sure you throw the paradox and you're going to throw another one when you swap to fire So remember this part of the opener as soon as you swap to fire and you throw your sharp cast into the fire one which will be paradox uh, you want to throw that as well and as soon as this happens as soon as this occurs you're going to be doing that back to back so this is the opener once the opener is over this is what you'll be doing this right here you're going to be throwing the blizzard three uh, the blizzard four the sharp cast instant and then we're going to do a uh, not the sharp cast, the Blizzard 4 into the Paradox, uh, instant Paradox, I should say, uh, that lets us do a sharp cast. This also lets us throw the Amplifier. It lets us throw Adel. Uh, it lets us throw uh, a, a Mana Ward. Pretty much any OG CD that you're able to throw, you can throw immediately since the uh, uh, Paradox coming from Fire to Ice will be instant. Uh, so the paradox goes through we pop the sharp cast uh, now when using sharp cast since the opener is quite lengthy you have plenty of things to do multiple despairs uh, you're able to outlast the two sharp cast uh, timers so they're both back on uh, cooldown effectively the full 60 seconds have completely refreshed now this doesn't really work once your opener is over because uh, normal uh, black mage rotations is really not that f is it's not that quick it's about roughly 30 32 35 seconds so you roughly have one charge of sharp cast uh, whenever it's uh, when all is said and done basically so the idea is if you don't have two charges of sharp cast during any time uh, of you throwing the uh, paradox make sure you use it on firestarter 
because Firestarter is still part of your main core mechanic of Black Mage. You need the Firestarter in order to make your rotation more fluid, more effective, easier for you to dodge stuff, easier for you to maintain pretty much everything. It, 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 it It's difficult. The Fire 3 instant it makes the Black Mage rotation what it really is. So after the instant paradox, uh, we throw the sharp cast, and then at this point we continue the rotation. Uh, we basically throw the thunder three. Uh, we get the thunder proc that we're going to use here later on, uh, since we should have two charges. Uh, this is past the opener. Um, we should have two charges here, so we're going to throw our fire three, uh, an immediate sharp cast once again uh, into the. Uh, Paradox, since we swapped from the Blizzard 3 to the Fire 3, we get another Paradox. So this is Paradox, and this will be Paradox once more. That was kind of lengthy, right? This is basically Paradox in a nutshell. I'm going to show you guys here a real quick example of how these kind of shift. Uh, so we're going to do the opener. Let's do the opener here real quick. That goes through. I should throw my amplifier here. Okay, and the Blizzard 4, the Thunder 3, and then the Fire 3. Sharp cast, there's my Paradox. Full cast, Thunder, Swift, Triple, and then we basically do our normal rotation that we've been doing from level 80. 3, and 4. We wait, plenty of time. Toss the, the free, uh, the the free, the fire three, and then we pop our ley lines. We continue our rotation, and then we do the normal setup. Now, once you've gone through the entire segment, and you're back to the spare, the sharp cast should be available again. Uh, I'm just gonna do a quick reset here. And then we do the despair. We've gone through a complete setup, and now we do the Blizzard three again. Notice how the this, the paradox is now active. Blizzard three into the instant paradox. Swift cast thunder. Fire three. We should get another paradox. Sharp cast into the full cast paradox from the opener. And that's basically all you do. Uh, at which point now, once you do the normal rotation, you're going to throw your triple cast. And then once you do a hard reset, you will only have one sharp cast available to you. As long as you do the rotation fast enough, you should only have one charge of sharp cast. Use that one charge on the fire three from the fire starter proc. That is your first priority. The thunder cloud proc is second priority if you have two charges all right let's move on all right this is going to be a single target opener for level 90 um most likely not going to do an aoe mostly because the only change to the aoe is the amplifier uh i may as well throw an example here real quick uh the amplifier is thrown basically after your uh, high blizzard 2 you amplify and then you throw the freeze I mean, that's pretty much where you throw the amplifier. Uh, you'll get a, a an instant charge of um, the foul, which should be instant as well. Um, and basically, it just goes downhill from there. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, similar, extremely similar to level 80. Uh, but with that, let's go ahead and start with the single target rotation. Um, we're going to start with an homage to the Thundercloud uh, fancied Black Mage. So we start off with a sharp cast. Whether you want to throw it at a, I don't know, roughly 12 second timer before the raid starts. People like to do that sort of stuff in the Savage and Ultimate content. Uh, you can press it immediately when they start doing the timer. Uh, or you can just press it right as soon as the tank pulls. It really doesn't ma really matter a whole lot. Uh, so the, the sharp cast goes through. We're going to do a Blizzard 3 into the Blizzard 4. Uh, Thunder 3 that procs your sharp cast. You should have a Thundercloud. Uh, proc now we're going to do a fire three 
we're going to immediate sharp cast again. This time we're going to use it on a fire one. Uh, this guy is not going to be a fire one. It will be a uh, paradox. It's going to consume the first Umbro heart charge uh, and it's going to do a whopping 500 potency. So make sure you get the uh, paradox whenever they are available. And as soon as that goes through, you're going to throw your uh, your Thundercloud proc from the earlier Thunder 3 uh, being your sharp cast that you threw in the beginning of the opener. Uh, so the Thundercloud proc is instant and that lets you throw uh, double weave uh, two spells whether you want to do the swift cast first or you want to do the triple cast uh, it's really up to you just make sure that they both go back to back uh, similar to the level 80 rotation uh, just make sure that they go back to back and after that we're going to burn our four fire fours uh, these are instant casts so you can move around as you do this all right, this is going to be a uh, rotation example for the level 90 Black Mage uh, Endwalker. Let's go ahead and try to do this correctly the first time. So, Sharp Cast into Blizzard 3, Immediate Amplifier into Blizzard 4, Thunder 3, Fire 3, Sharp Cast again, Fire 1, Thunder 3. Swift triple one two three and four look around fire three ley lines okay one and two finish despair xeno glossy and a font fire four despair xeno glossy I get ether, despair, reset, instant, sharp cast, on the three, fire three, sharp cast, uh, the paradox, instant, triple, one, two, three, four, Fire three. Okay, two more fire fours. Watch that amplifier. Reset. Despair. Let's go ahead and toss a Xenoglossa here. And the three. We're not throwing a thunder since we only have one charge of the Sharp cast, we're going to use it on that. So back to swift triple. Watch for this. Two. Three. Four. Instant. Okay. One. Amplify. Two. You don't need to throw the second one, but it's nice and safe if you need to move around. Reset. And you kind of get the idea. Uh, I should have I shouldn't have thrown the second one, but yeah, uh, that should be pretty good for a example on a single target. Once the uh, the opener goes through completely, and you have um, you've completely exhausted all of your uh, all of your MP, the mega ethers and all that stuff, you should have two charges of your sh uh, sharp cast. Uh, you're going to swap to the Umbro Ice, uh, do the uh, the Blizzard 4, after the Blizzard 3, toss the instant Paradox. Uh, make sure you sharp cast out a Thunder 3, and then you Fire 3, sharp cast out a Fire 1. <clears throat> when that goes through and you're back to reset again, that means uh, using a Despair, you should only have one charge of sharp cast. So the third time back uh, when you get the Swift cast and the Triple cast back again. In a full cycle, you should only have one charge of sharp cast. Make sure, make sure you use that uh, that one charge of sharp cast, similar to the level 80 rotation, 70 and 60. Make sure you use it on the uh, astral fire sharp cast into the the paradox, which should be the fire one, so you can get the uh, fire three off the 
on Firestarter proc. When you only have one chart cast, make sure it goes on on the Firestarter. If you have two charges, you can do both the Thundercloud and then the Firestarter. Uh, that should be a pretty good example for Black Mage. Uh, kind of give you an example for the AoE heal real soon. I just gotta wait for the Mega Ether to come back up again. And of course, finally a level 90 AoE. Uh, pretty much the same. Uh, I probably forgot to mention on the level 80, your sharp cast is used readily at that point. It should be 30 seconds on it. Uh, sh pretty much AoE is the same as level 80 at level 90, except with one slightly moved detail. Um, we're going to move everything forward by one uh, because we want to throw the amplifier pretty much in the opener. Uh, these are the upgraded Fire 2s, uh, and then this is the upgraded Blizzard 2 that goes there. And then right here is pretty much the one change to the rotation. Uh, amplifier goes through, and then we have more charges of uh, a foul to throw immediately. Uh, or you can hold on to that and then just throw up to three fouls uh, once the tank stops pulling but the idea is still there it, it hasn't changed ever since uh heaven's word so yep good old good old black mage uh, make sure you throw that triple cast as soon as the ley lines expires similar to level 80 you guys should know how to do this there's there's really not much uh, for me to explain other than just throw a bunch of flares <laughs> back to back in the opener and then after that you know you're gonna throw two flares and then throw an instant high blizzard too because of your triple cast and that's it just make sure you watch out for the amplifier if you know for whatever reason uh rarity sake uh, enemies last longer than 120 seconds during aoe pulls you know just make sure this is always being put on cooldown uh, unless you're focusing on the boss fights itself, then go ahead and go back to the uh, single target rotation. All right. Thank you to all of my Patreon members, as well as any contributors, both old and new. Thanks for watching. Click here to subscribe to this channel. If you wish to join Tempest Discord, if interested in joining Tempest Town's free company in Crystal Brynhildr, finally consider supporting us on Patreon or other donation sites in the description below. This channel is a work in progress and will always seek to improve. Thank you.